What's going on, you guys? Today, I want to talk to you about reason number four why Star Trek Infinite is different than Stellaris. Why it's more than a mod. Okay, so this is reason number four. Reason number four is fuel. So, in Stellaris, if you're a Stellaris player, you notice that uh, early in the game, you pretty much go anywhere you want. And actually, throughout the whole game, you can go pretty much anywhere you want. So, like, for example, if you're the Valden Union, right, and you have an alliance with... The Empire of Shimmering Stars, you can go from here, move your fleets all the way over to, maybe let's say you're fighting them, you can move your fleets here and go to town, right? Even early on in the game, when you don't have alliances, and let's say you're growing here and then there's an enemy you don't like, maybe it's a friend of yours that you just kind of want to, <laughs> you know, kick his butt, uh, you can move your fleets all across the galaxy and attack them, right? So, the, in Stellaris, there really isn't a fuel source. Yep, I mean, you have to build the minerals um, to build the starship. But beyond that, you're, you're pretty much good. Um, so, there's no limiting factor uh, in Stellaris uh, where you can move your fleets. As long as you have an alliance here or you can pass through their space as, long, as long as they don't block you. You can move through their space. Um, or in, early in the game, you can just go through empty space to the other side of the galaxy if you want. Star Trek's doing things a little bit different. Uh, in Star Trek, we all know that lithium is a fuel source. Uh, Romulans do a little something a little different. But pretty much the entire Federation uses dilithium to power their starships. So, you know, just like Voyager that was going from this part of the galaxy to Federation space, which is somewhere around here, um, you know, they had to stop and get dilithium along the way. So in Star Trek Infinite, they are... And this is where a little bit of influence comes from Birth of the Federation. In Birth of the Federation, um, they uh, what they did to kind of handle the fuel kind of thing is they kind of gave you uh, kind of like a sphere from where your last outpost is built or where your shipyard is built. So, for example, uh, let's say this is from space, right? So here's an outpost right here, right? So outpost operational, outpost. So if you wanted to send a fleet from here to over here, you have to build outpost. So outpost, starbase, outpost, outpost, right? So then as you build the outpost, your range, which is determined by these red, yellow, and green indicators, move further. Um, and so basically the more outposts you build, the further your range of your ships go. And Star Trek Infinite is doing that. So as you can see here, um, you have a... Cardassian fleets, and then you have Cardassian space here, and I'm assuming there's probably outposts or shipyards here. So it extends the range of Cardassian ships to this huge uh, blue bubble here. Um, so now if you want to take this fleet here to go to this star system, you can. Uh, you could probably go all the way up to here, here. Uh, you can't get to the, is that the Devron system? All good things. Um, so obviously you can't get to the Devron system. Now what you could do is probably build an outpost here and this blue marker here will extend all the way probably to the, is that the Chaltox, Ch Chalox system? My eyes are bad. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and that's generally how Star Trek Infinite is going to handle range and ha handle fuel in Star Trek Infinite. And this is like the perfect way to handle this because you know fuel is a resource in star trek you can't just have fleets to go from one end of the galaxy to the other without having to deal with fuel that's not realistic you know that's it takes away it breaks a lot of immersion at least for me it does um and ever since they brought up this dev diary and released this information i've been starting to think i'm like that is something stellaris should be having right like there should be something like that in stellaris because you know if you have a ship and you're trying to go from point A to point B, you're going to need some kind of fuel to get there, to power your ship, to power the um, warp drive. Uh, so, yeah, um, I'm glad that they're doing this. I love that. I have a feeling that this is somewhat influenced from Birth of the Federation because I believe in the dev diary they mentioned outposts. Um, your ship will be limited based upon how many outposts you have and, you know, that's how your range is going to be set by where your outposts are. Um, so I've noticed all these little tidbits of Birth of the Federation, Birth of the Federation sprinkled throughout Star Trek Infinite. I love, love that the developers have done this. Um, I am a 
I'm just, I love that, like, there's so much influence in this legendary Star Trek game in Star Trek Infinite. And by these influences being there and building on those influences is going to make Star Trek Infinite an overnight success. Uh, I can tell you a lot of Star Trek gamers wanted a Birth of the Federation 2, and honestly, this is our Birth of the Federation 2. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Catch the next one. See you then.